Tim Tun Shaker will regale us with a couple of songs. Shakers. 
Next I have a letter. It's the last letter we'll read. It's an excerpt from a letter. It's from the 2nd Lieutenant John Ketchum of the 4th New York Cavalry. Frederick City, July 8th, 1863. <coughs> and I'll try and get through this. Dear Mother, I telegraphed to, see, to thee as soon as I could and wrote about Edward. I cannot realize that he is dead. Don't let it kill thee, Mother. Thee and I are all that is left of us. Edward was the first man killed in the regiment. They were lying on the ground behind a little mill in front of our batteries, making it part of the outer line of battle. It is always necessary in such time for someone to keep a lookout to watch for the movement of the enemy. As the men all lay on their faces, Edward was sitting to look. A sharpshooter's bullet probably struck him in the temple and went through his head. There was heavy fighting on the ground shortly thereafter, and our forces had possession of the field for a short time. Edward's body was carried back a couple hundred <coughs> yards and left under a tree. I heard of it the next morning and went to the regiment and got a man to go with me who helped me carry him off. He showed me where he lay. It was outside of our breastworks about 40 or 50 yards and a couple hundred yards beyond our outer line of sharpshooters. When I got him, I brought him down under a tree. A captain of one of the batteries said to me, if he were a brother of mine, I would bury him on the field of glory. He was very kind and sent me a man to dig the grave. So in a little grove behind the batteries, under an oak tree, in his soldier's uniform, racked in a shelter tent, lies all the earthly remains of my brother. He has gone to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. And mother, thee and I must walk this world of sorrow. I set for his headstone a piece of young oak cut off by a rebel shell and marked his name on the regiment. Mother, yet a little time thee and I have to walk this earth when we compare it to the great eternity beyond where Father and Edward have gone before us. Oh, he was cut down in the mo very morning of his manhood. He has laid a sacrifice on the altar of liberty. He died to give every other man a right to his own manhood, a precious sacrifice, for in him were heroism, a brave heart, and an iron will. He died as he would have died, with his face towards the enemies. Edward has marched many a weary mile. He has lain in the wet, cold ground with nothing over him for long nights with the rain pouring on him and never murmured. He has lain and shivered in the snow and the slush all long winter nights. After weary marches, hungry perhaps, and after eating a few hard crackers and a little raw meat and his discomfort, he has never wished for home, except perhaps to look forward to that bright day when the rebellion would be over and he should return home, war-worn and covered with his honors that day at last he can never see. O oh God, thy price for freedom is a dear one. Shortly after this letter was written, John Ketchum was captured and sent to Libby Prison, where he died on October 8th, 1863. Now we'll have presentation of floral tributes. I'd like to have all the wreath presenters come up and form in this area over here. The second wreath will be presented on behalf of the United States Army by Major General Anthony Kukulo and his subordinates.
third wreath is going to be presented on behalf of the National Park Service by Superintendent Bob Kirby. The fourth wreath will be presented by the National Organization Sons of Confederate Veterans, presented by James K. Palm Palmasano, PA Division Commander, SCV. Fifth wreath. Thank you. Fifth wreath is being presented by PA for the PA Division, Sons of Confederate Veterans, by Carrie Castile. The sixth wreath is being presented on behalf of the Military Order of the Loyal Legion of the United States by Jeffrey Burden, Commander in Chief. The seventh wreath is being presented on behalf of the Women's Relief Corps, Comrade Gabriel Corps 136 by Mary Jane Bannon. The eighth wreath is being paid and placed on behalf of the National <coughs> Organization Daughters of Union Veterans of the Civil War by Ms. Carol Morton, President. <coughs> 